السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good evening ladies and gentlemen uh, I'm sure that you can hear me very well Can't you? Great Thank you Iman Abdullah Ziyad Ragad Reem and others Thank you very much Thank you, Brother Dolphikar. Thank you, Ayman. Okay, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, today's workshop is a very, very important topic and is a modern topic and sometimes can be a controversial topic nowadays. Uh, the topic is going to be about chat GPT in academic writing, advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons. Uh, it is going to be presented by our outstanding presenter and colleague, Ms. Humaira Salim. Ms. Humaira Salim is a dynamic and enthusiastic teacher who is currently working at the English Language Institute as an instructor, King Abdelaziz University, of course. She's been working at the ELI for about 11 to 12 years. Overall, uh, Ms. Salim has been early or has been nearly uh, has nearly 22 years of teaching experience in different or at different colleges and universities in both Pakistan and Saudi Arabia. Uh, Ms. Salim has a master's degree in English literature and being equipped with diploma in TEFL teaching English as a foreign language from the re renowned universities in Pakistan. She believes in a positive teacher-student relationship, and that's why she always succeeds to establish a great rapport with her students. Uh, Ms. Salim is a knowledgeable English language teacher following the English language standards, modern teaching methods and techniques, and assessment system. She has offered her services to the Institute as a mentor as well. She is eager to provide a creative and friendly environment for English language learners. Mr. Uh, Ms. Humaira is still trying to explore more as an English language teacher to make a difference uh, in the field of education, which is the job of outstanding teachers who really make a difference. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Sister Humaira. Enjoy it, please. Thank you so much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Mr. Kamal, and thank you so much, everyone who is here around me. And it's really encouraging me. Okay. So I would like to thank you, uh, the AWC, actually, to, for giving me a chance to present something really valuable, uh, something that is actually a huge discussion hot topic of it. So in today's webinar, we will actually explore and discuss the practical uses and impact of chat GPT in general and specifically on education. We'll also comment on its potential benefits for both teachers and students, especially in academic writing. Okay, so let's start. As for the agenda, Introduction of ChatGPT, how ChatGPT works and its abilities in the artificial intelligence world, its impact on education system, is ChatGPT a threat to educators, benefits and challenges of ChatGPT in academic writing, and then of course, the ending. Okay. Quite familiar, right? This logo, this sign, everything, right? What is it? Yes. This is the giant chatbot, ChatGPT. Okay. By the way, my dear audience, I would like to suggest you just please the um, Keep your phone or your desktop or your laptop on full screen mode so that you you could enjoy the quality of today's presentation because I tried my best to present something really interesting, okay, including some videos, of course, for about teachers, students, 
uh, sharing their ideas or views about ChatGPT. Okay. The Eureka moment. Well, this popular chatbot, ChatGPT, has been the talk of the town ever since it was enabled for public access and use. Uh, its popularity has increased rapidly in education sector as well. And it's no wonder that this chatbot has gained global popularity with the highest percentage of users. Now see how. ChatGPT within a week of its launch had over 1 million users and has been praised tremendously by many thought wars, including Elon Musk, calling it a scary god. Scary good. There are a couple of things that have caught attention and have mesmerized many, such as it's human-like responsive with lightning speed, its ability to share information on diverse range of topics, especially in content creation. It has astonished everyone with its ability to write essays, blogs, poems, and other forms of literature within a minute. Now, owing to its reputation and capability to generate human-like responses to questions, this bot is becoming a trusted companion to many learners and educators. However, like any nascent technology, ChatGPT is higher in higher education has its share of challenges as well. Yeah, like uh, everything, you know, nothing is perfect. So goes for ChatGPT as well. Okay, as I advise you kindly, I hope you're uh, you are having a full screen mode. I'm going to share a video. Just watch and enjoy. Of course, it's about the, it's relevant to the topic. In the last few weeks, ChatGPT, the artificial intelligence chatbot built by OpenAI, has been on an ambitious killing spree. Timelines overflow with eulogies to its victims, search engines, copywriters, coders, high school essays, and many more. Now, reports of these impending deaths may be exaggerated. Human beings love to write the words, this will change everything, only to shrug a year later when this changed very little. ChatGPT might be a game changer, it might not be. Either way, the bot is undeniably impressive. What really astounds is its rhetorical muscle, its ability to generate paragraphs of coherent argument or narrative. Obviously, there are several million humans to which it can't hold a candle in this regard, but it instantly hurdled several million others, landing somewhere in the neighborhood of a high school student who's perfectly happy with a B minus on their Pride and Prejudice book report. Okay, so you see, innovation can be exciting, right? It can bring convenience and comfort. Now, let's look further in detail. What exactly is this chatbot? Okay, some relevant information about its origin. ChatGPT, which stands for Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformer, is an artificial intelligence chatbot developed by OpenAI Research Lab, launched on November 30. 2022. The advent of ChatGPT meant setting a new mark of chatbots. Okay, as we know that this is based exactly on large language model LMM, LLM. That means you can ask a question, means prompt, and it will write a text for you. The, this ranges from writing a limerick to writing a scientific article. So to generate text, ChatGPT doesn't need to understand the prompt and the answer. Instead, the prompt gives the chatbot a context within which it will use probability to find out which words best line up for big sentences for its users. Okay, this powerful language model um, has a wide range of applications, including chatbots, automated customer service, language translations, coding, animation, uh, Photoshop and much more actually. There's, a, there's something really wide to explore. ChatGPT can generate text in around 95 spoken languages. Impressive, right? It can also handle multiple dialects, making it a useful tool for global communication. Hey, ChatGPT, amazing. Okay. Okay, now 
talking about some of the abilities of chat GPT in the world of artificial intelligence. We are actually just talking about this in general, of course, so that we could get familiar. Of course, many of you, I mean, I think most of you are aware of it, about it, but just like it flows, you know, we move from general to the specific. ChatGPT can learn from data and improve over time, empowering it to provide more accurate and relevant responses. This makes it an asset that can adapt to changing needs and requirements of its users. Okay, good news for us. It can assist to reduce our workload, facilitating us to focus on intricate tasks, helping administration to upsurge efficiency and output. Okay, now we'll see what's the difference between Google and ChatGPT, because you might be wondering, this is the same thing that Google has been doing for our same job, you like search engine, huh? So you can ask the question and ChatGPT will answer it just like Google, but the difference is that Google produces source, sources from which you have to extract the information yourself, whereas ChatGPT is more efficient and produces a written out answer. However, the risk factor is that it's not easy to verify if the answer is true or not. Mm, complicated. Okay, now let's learn something more about this versatile chatbot. It turns heads, racks up users. Well, this unique chatbot can operate 24 seven, providing continuous support and assistance to its user. Impressive. Okay, normally the core function of a chatbot is to mimic a human conversationalist or speaker. ChatGPT is versatile. Among countless examples, it can write and debug computer programs, it can compose music, um, tally plays, fairy tales, essays, answering the test questions, generate business ideas, write poetry and song lyrics. Wow. Translate and summarize the text. Says. It can proofread a text and so it can remove spelling and grammatical mistakes. Wow, good news for students. Okay, it, it can emulate a uh, Linux system and simulate entire chat rooms. It can play games like tic-tac-toe or simulate an ATM, automated time machine, and much, much more. Wow, chat GPT. Wonderful. Okay, let's see who's there. Wow. So this is actually, these are the masterminds behind such, um, you know, a remarkable chatbot. So let's meet the team. You can see here Sam Altman. He is the CEO of OpenAI. Then here it's Greg Brockman, the co-founder of OpenAI. Here you can see Elias Wutzgeber. He's the chief scientist of this organization. Next is Wujia Zaremba. He is the computer scientist. And this one is, oops, oh, okay. Okay, ChatGP didn't stop after it came into the battle. It actually is still growing, right? Okay, now we'll just look that it started in um, November 2022, right? And see this year, Yanni, starting from February 2023, uh, it has developed like amazingly. In February 2023, uh, OpenAI launched a premium service, ChatGPT Plus, that cost $20 a month, okay. Then there was ChatGPT4 that was released on March 14, 2023, and it was made available for premium ChatGPT users. Next, in May 2023, OpenAI launched an iOS mobile app as well for ChatGPT. That's quite convenient and user-friendly, right? Uh, the app supports chat history, syncing, and voice input as well using Whisper, that is the speak recognition model of OpenAI. In July 2023, uh, OpenAI made its exclusive code interpreter plugin accessible to all subscribers of ChatGPT. 
and then it unveiled an Android app, initially rolling it out in a few countries, and then they have decided to introduce it to some more countries as well. Impressed. Let's see. There are some limitations of this chatbot as well. Yeah, as I told you, nothing, nothing in this world is perfect, right? So like any other technology, ChatGPT has its own set of flaws that one must consider before using it. Okay. We know now that ChatGPT depends on the data to comprehend and produce responses or a prompt. So it may not implement well in complex or unfamiliar situation because it lacks relevant data that could lead to inaccurate or inappropriate answer and it can make the users feel frustrated. It may not always distinguish between different users or contexts, so it can easily confuse the users. Well, ChatGPT may require ongoing maintenance and updates to ensure the best performance, hence it's going to be time consuming and costly for institutions with limited resources. ChatGPT may be vulnerable to hacking or other cyber attacks, which could be compromise the security of the user's debt. This is a significant concern for organizations that handle sensitive or personal information. So you can't rely on it in this manner. Okay, now you might have heard, oh, ChatGPT is going to snatch your jobs. You see, uh, but somehow this is true. How? This chatbot has also raised concerns about job displacement and its impact on employment, particularly in industries where automation is becoming more common. Keeping in view some of these general downsides, human need a careful consideration and planning to minimize its possible negative effects. Okay, now moving to the specific topic. The impact of ChatGPT on education system. Okay, good news for teachers. It's a system, right? How? As education continues to evolve, technology will always be at the forefront. We know that artificial intelligence is developing. We will see more of ChatGPT and its impact on the world of education and face changes in the future. Obviously, the popular ChatGPT has its impact on education and transparently has influenced the ways we are inclined to do assignments and most of our jobs. So much is said and written about ChatGPT, which has both actually fans and often expert that the tool is going to have a significant effect on our education system is without a doubt. So to understand these influences well, it's important to understand how this open AI tool works and what are its abilities. So this is actually the purpose of today's webinar. Now let's talk about some of the examples why we say that ChatGPT has a key role in the future of education. How? Okay. This chatbot offers services like learning languages, coding, writing, brainstorming, and other useful materials. It's a suitable option for creating content, mainly because of its ability to write emails, stories, summaries, reviews, essays, and blogs. ChatGPT's ability to process information in a short period of time and the easy access to its users helped it gain popularity among teachers and students too. Okay, now we know that this chatbot can handle 95 spoken languages and this gives an advantage to the students, especially who who have a goal of creating adequate content by using AI as an assistive method for writing techniques. Now let's check in detail the benefits and challenges of ChatGPT in academic writing. Wow, the group of teachers, they seem happy, right? Why? 
because they actually came to know some of the benefits for teachers of ChatGPT. Okay, let's find out how it can help us, the teachers. Well, it can assist us in multiple ways as follows. It can create customized learning material for each student based on their individual needs and abilities. Okay, it can automate repetitive tasks such as grading, providing feedback and creating educational content, thus saving teachers time and energy. Wow, life savior, right? Okay, it's flexible as well. How that it can create a variety of educational resources such as interactive tutorials, study guides, and online quizzes, making education accessible to students regardless of location or schedule or whatever. No time restraint, right? ChatGPT is user-friendly. It can create educational resources accessible to students with disabilities, making education more inclusive. Of course, we have, uh, you know, it, it basically it's, uh, this point is talking about uh, the students who are actually uh, physically challenged, you know, and uh, impairment, physical impairments like so in this way, it's a great help. I will further just uh, discuss about it, how it works in that scenario. It can develop a comprehensive lesson plan for a course. Wow. ChatGPT, we are getting familiar with you. OK, it can generate a variety of questions like MCQs, true and false, fill in the blanks, etc., for a class test or a quiz. Hey, hey, hey. And it can examine students' assignments. Teachers are happy, right? OK. It can offer tips and tricks for increasing students' engagement and reducing troublesome behavior in classroom. You know, some disruptive learners. OK. Wow, the students, my dear students, they are so happy. Why? Because they I have some, they, they came to know some benefits of ChatGPT for students. Now we will see how it can help our students. Okay. ChatGPT improves accessibility to education by removing barriers for people with disabilities and non-native speakers. For instance, ChatGPT can speak out the responses for uh, students with sight impairments. You know, as I uh, just in the last slide, I was talking about people with disability, like physically challenged and special needs, um, like intellectual disability, learning disability, but of course it's not for motivational disability, right? Motivation is something that we have to actually work on it ourselves. It can't help in that. Okay. It provides students with an alternative way of answering assignments questions. There won't be a something really repetitive answer for the same question every time. Uh, it can help students actually quickly access information and answer the question on a wide range of subjects. So it eases the research and homework tasks. Modified learning. It can provide tailored and interactive responses based on the student's proficiency and learning style. So it provides a personalized experience for students in a smart way. ChatGPT. It can act as a tool for language learning, helping students practice speaking and writing in a foreign language. Uh, this chatbot provides 24-7 access to educational resources and support, so on-demand access to education is its remarkable feature. Apart from this, they can improve the quality of their academic essays with the help of individualized and personalized feedback from ChatGPT. Now, the most importantly, when exams are, exams are around the corner, ChatGPT can help students to prepare. It can recap your lesson, uh, class notes with emphasis on key terms. It can help them form an ideal answer 
to an important question and generate practice question to help students uh, become aware of their strength and weakness based on their subject matter. So in this way, it develops their skills. It's an innovative aid actually in learning system. How it's this dynamic chatbot can help in generating ideas, arguments, and direction for research. I'm so sorry. I think uh, my sweet audience is just sending me the messages, but actually I cannot. I'm just uh, on my window of the PowerPoint presentation, right? So inshallah, I'll just look for them later. And as for the question session, of course, Ms. my dear Ms. Basama, I would request you at that time just to allow the um, dear audience to ask question by using mic. Okay, improving the clarity, coherence, and style of writing. Okay, saving time and effort in writing tasks. Assisting students in expressing their thoughts and ideas while also checking grammar and sentence structure. So it also can improve their writing skill. Wow. So it can help us to create great writers, right? But who's that? Too much reliance of Generation Z on this digital tutor is alarming for digital immigrants. Am I missing something? OK, now let's see. Let's watch this video and find out what message this video is going to convey to the teachers and especially for the students. I have no idea what's going on in this class. What the? <laughs> oh, I'm taking computer science. Why am I being passed on molecular dynamics? I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. Chat The hell is that? This was true, Elon Musk, actually. Hello, my dear students. What do you see here? What would you comment on this video, right? You see that this mighty chatbot, it just helped this student in a fraction of a second, right? And he did, he, he actually, what does he do here? What do you call it? If there is any creativity involved in this task, or something, isn't it? Okay, let's find out. Now, this video is actually driving our attention to some of the downsides of using ChatGPT in academic writing. Hmm, what are the cons of using ChatGPT in academic writing for students, especially? Okay. Please, you're welcome to share your views. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. The first one is lack of academic integrity. 
this is a primary concern for using ChatGPT in higher education. Many educators believe that using ChatGPT for writing assignments will only promote cheating and plagiarism. Since ChatGPT generates responses quickly, it will decrease students' abilities to brainstorm, think critically, and be creative with the, their answers. And this is why we are teaching students in our institutions, right? So what if they are not actually meeting the requirements? OK. Uh, one of the cons is that it provides inaccurate information. Uh, the information provided by ChatGPT can seem plausible and well written, but it lacks insight and may not be necessarily accurate. It can be difficult to detect exactly which portion of the information are factually inaccurate. This can harm students' learning experience and decision making skill. You see? Bias responses. AI chatbots are trained on a massive database set. So if the dataset contains biases, chances are that same for the responses produced by chat GPT. Okay, and it will, it will be partial and unfair. This is harmful and can amplify discrimination against certain groups of people and create an unhealthy environment, of course. Further, we know that it has been actually trained with a lot of information, but there's still some information it cannot access. Due to this, it may not be able to provide good answers about some topics. It may also not be aware of the, uh, some of the developments or progress in different fields, of course, because the data that has been given to it, it's quite limited. Inability to multitask and understand context, okay? It can only work on one task and respond to one query at a time. If a student asks multiple questions at a time, ChatGPT may struggle to uh, prioritize and slow down without responding to all of the questions. Oh, pathetic, right? Besides this, ChatGPT can find it difficult to understand the context um, and the nonce of the human language. For instance, if a student uses humor or uh, sarcasm in a question, ChatGPT may not pick up on that and provide an irrelevant responses. Of course, uh, ChatGPT is uh, not holding a degree in literature, right? No, no English literature, right? Okay. So you see that we want to use ChatGPT, but we cannot rely on it. So there are some challenges, actually, that we need to work on, in, especially in academic writing. So one of the main negative impacts on education is the blocking of creativity, which results in a lack of self-involved ideas and the more frequent use of the services such as chatbots, which leads to a point where human creativity is not used as much or maybe not at all. Okay, even though it gives quick feedback, most of the feedback is slightly flawed. It is understandable that there are some issues in this area since it has yet to develop but in general most of the work is just summarized and not specified now talking about the emotional intelligence okay we know that emotional intelligence plays an important role in education setting of course A human educator can understand the emotions of students and respond accordingly, as we did in our classrooms, right? An educator is capable of providing emotional support in challenging times. This isn't the case with a virtual chatbot like ChatGPT, which lacks emotional intelligence, and thus uh, this is unable to comprehend human emotions. Okay, now though they can come across empathetic they fail to respond appropriately 
to complex human emotions. So it's generally about chatbots, okay? And the last thing is actually, this is more convincing. It's, it can be it can be addicted. Once student uh, start relying on it, um, they somehow find it easy. The easy way that just we saw the way we saw in the video, right? Okay, now based on the information so far, I would like to ask my dear audience some question. Is ChatGPT a threat to educators? Okay, there, there's a set of questions for you guys. How can universities best address the challenges ChatGPT or chat generative pre-trained transformer poses? Could the both, uh, this, this chatbot enhance education? Does it use its use have any benefits in the classroom? Yes. You can turn on your mics, please, and just give me your valuable, let's say, views, please. You can share your views. So far, whatever we have just, you know, see, uh, we, we, we have actually focused on some very important aspects of chat GPT so far. So based on that, what do you suggest? I cannot see the messages. I'm so sorry. Could you please turn on your mics? Okay, just tell me in one word. You think that you are convinced by the, uh, you know, the heroic deeds or task of this giant chatbot? Somehow, hmm? should we move on? Okay, let's find out. Uh, hi. Yes, please. Hello. Yes. Uh, Hello. So um, I would like to comment about if the bots can change education. Um, I I think that like student might use ChatGPT for feedback maybe, but not for writing the whole essay or doing like helping them to do mm -hmm. homework and stuff. Exactly, to get some prompts, you know? It's like, it's, uh... it's like the way, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like using, let's say, for example, Google's Translate. When they translate the whole thing, it's it's wrong. But let's say they're looking for a word and they're treating it as a dictionary. Uh, it might be okay, you know, using technology just yeah. to assist you, to help you, but not to do the whole thing. That's all. <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, this is the case, and that's why we are actually conducting this webinar so that we could actually reach to a conclusion that we cannot deny its importance. We see how uh, effective its uses are and its implications are actually impressive. So, but there are some uh, shortcomings as well. So, we need to work on it. So, inshallah, by the end of the presentation, we'll reach to the conclusion. I, I made sure, inshallah. <laughs> Okay, now let's see the next slide. If you're going to use chat G. Okay. Okay. If you're going to use chat GPT to cheat. At least do this one thing. Because ChatGPT, the open AI chatbot can be used to answer questions, write code and give you the meaning of life. You may be enticed to use it to cheat on your school, unless you're in one of the school districts that outright banned or blocked ChatGPT, of course. But even still, I recommend you don't cheat. A revolutionary take, I know. But if you must, at least do this one thing. Ask it to explain the reasoning behind the answer it gave you. As a matter of fact, it already does this. But reading isn't remembering. Understanding it is. So provide some follow-up questions to really give you an understanding and explain your understanding in a simple way back into ChatGPT for it to confirm that you do understand it. Because as Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. Well, Einstein didn't actually say that, but eh, it's a good quote. <laughs> okay, so what do you say about this video? He's giving them some guidelines, right? 
where if you have to use chat GPT in a way that you have to copy something. So he's telling uh, the users to be smart, right? Okay, so, so far, what should we label it? Should we call it a chat bot or a cheat bot? Hmm? That's the question. Okay, okay, come on. I'm looking forward for your valuable uh, news. If piece. you're going to use chat. Okay. Now, based on this video and some of the downsides of ChatGPT, the question is do ChatGPT prompts contain plagiarism? We know that ChatGPT is bound to research from multiple sources, which leads to a few misconceptions. One of the issues that ChatGPT faces is plagiarism. This software, despite being too advanced, is likely in work and up because of its incompetence to plagiarism. Uh, evidently, this uh, happens due to parts of the feedback that can be worse that were reused from other sites. Because it faces this type of situation, we need a solution for it, right? We cannot rely on it blindly. This is not going to work. So it's important to note that it's not necessarily related to plagiarism, but otherwise it can create results that might turn out as such. Well, the key point is, at the end of the day, this will remain artificial intelligence, but the plagiarism will be real. So just don't do it, OK? OK. Cheating using ChatGPT. How? All methods like writing on the desk, hand, water bottle, whispering, and passing papers are gone. Apparently, there have been a series of cases where students got caught cheating by using ChatGPT as a source to generate scripts and other methods for their work. Yeah, there are so many evidence. You know, must, one must check online, yeah. OK. Now see one of the evidence. How game recognizes game. Dear students, you're all getting an X for incomplete on your final assignment. I am copying your essays in the chat GPT. If it tells me you cheated, I am giving you a zero. How could you do this? We're about to graduate. I wrote my whole assignment in Google Docs. I can show you the timestamps. Chat GPT, what's that? Okay, that guy definitely cheated, but we didn't. If Chat GPT said that you use Chat GPT, then you use Chat GPT. You can't just give us a zero because Chat GPT said that we use Chat GPT. It's not reliable. And by the way, I didn't use it. This is my decision. Sorry. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Several students have been exonerated and their grades have been issued. Though one student did admit to using Chat GPT in the course. We thought we weren't going to graduate. This was really stressful. Surprise! I was the one who used Chat GPT. <laughs> this last one, right? Okay. Now what to do? Where to go, huh? So you see Elon Musk is quite right to call this chatbot as um, uh, when he, we call, he calls it scary good, right? Now we need to find some solutions to control such cheating cases, right? Uh, the point is that we cannot deny the importance of chat, uh, chat GPT, right? That's for sure. Uh, but now dealing with some of the cheating cases, uh, we need to figure it out. So is there any way to stop this sort of phenomenon from happening? Maybe one of the ways to make sure the text is genuine is to turn it through artificial intelligence content detector, giving you instant and reliable results on whether a text is genuine or AI generated. Or just make all test handwritten essays just like we did back in the day. Or maybe oral presentation. Hmm? Now, we 
yeah, in, on, in this video, on this slide, you are going actually, you're actually going to watch a prime example why we say that a teacher is teacher. Here comes ChatGPT Zero. You're a teacher. You need to know about this new website students can use to cheat in your class. Okay, so there's been a new way to tell if students are using ChatGPT to do their answers in your class. This anti-cheating program was actually developed by a student at Princeton. It is called GPT Zero. Okay, so I dropped in a couple paragraphs for my dissertation, which I did not use Chat GPT for. And what it does is it analyzes like a perplexity number based on like how complex it was. So what I understand, it takes a computer program and it goes in and it analyzes the text to see if it could have been written by a computer program. It's like game, recognize game, computer game. Mine got a 40 and then you break it down and like it actually breaks it down by sentence, like the likelihood of those sentences. And then it takes in the link and then it gives you a new number based on that link. So it's like a more accurate version, taking into account like how long it was. Now let's drop in one from ChatGPT. Have ChatGPT write a 500 word essay on the influence of the Norman invasion on the English language. And it got a six. The lower the number, the higher chance, the higher probability that a computer wrote it. This may be a lifesaver for a lot of teachers. All if you want to keep learning more. <laughs> okay, here it comes. Our hero, yes, Tian Edward, who invented ChatGPT Zero. So, Chat, uh, sorry, GPT Zero is around. Teachers worried about students turning in essays written by popular artificial intelligence have now have a new tool of their own. As you just have seen in the video, how GPT Zero works, it's actually anti cheating. Uh, um, but that will help actually the application will help teachers to find out if the text provided by the students is exactly their own product or taken from chat gpt okay edward tian a 22 year old student in princeton university he just built this and uh, somebody's mic is on he has built an app to detect whether the text is written by ChatGPT. Okay, why? Because the viral chatbot um, that is unethically used by some people in Doctor. Hello, we can't hear you. I'm sorry, I didn't realize how did it happen. Actually, I didn't turn it off. Anyways, thank you, Ms. Vatma, for calling me and notifying me. Okay, we finished this, right? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, we finished. Okay, you watched this video, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, I didn't do that. Technical glitches, no. Okay. We're done. Okay. 
and this is actually a hero for the teachers. How? Because he invented GPT-0, an anti-cheating program. That's, uh, he doesn't sound actually, uh, I mean, this news isn't good for students, I'm sorry, but GPT-0 is around. Okay. Um, Edward Chen, a 22-year-old student at Princeton University, the amazing thing is he's a student, and being a student, he actually felt bad about it. So his motivation to create the bot was to fight what he sees as an increase in uh, artificial intelligence uh, plagiarisms. So since the release of ChatGPT, there have been reports of students using the breakthrough languages, uh, language models to pass off AI written assignments as their own. I quoted his words as it is because they are so impressive. This is his motivation actually behind this uh, amazing invention. He says that for so long, AI has been a black box where we really don't know what's going on inside. And with GPT-0, I wanted to start pushing that and fighting against that. There is so much chat GPT hype going around. Is this and that written by AI? So the golden words, we as humans deserve to know. Okay, now the point is, Tian is not opposed to the use of AI tools like ChatGPT. He says GPT-0 is not meant to be a tool to stop these technologies from being used. But with any new technologies, we need to be able to adopt its responsibility and we need to have safeguards. That's it. Hmm? Fair enough, huh? Okay. Now... What's next? What to do? It's going to, ChatGPT is going to be a difficult choice, right? Now looking ahead, somehow, I think many of us are just, we can relate this quote with us, to be or not to be, that's the question by our dear William Shakespeare. So actually this, uh, I found it rightly fitted while I was just composing my presentation. So I added it just for fun, but I like it, by the way. Now, what do teachers who assign writing need to know about AI text generators? How should we change our pedagogical practice given the recent advances in AI large language models, LLMS, such as OpenAI's GPT-3? How should teachers participate in shaping policies around these technologies in our departments, institutions, and society? We need to figure out. Fair enough? Okay. Now, there is something really um, valuable, actually. I quoted these words from Professor Mark, uh, he is one of the faculty members of education and informatics in University of California. In his webinar on January 26, 2023, he said something that really touched me. So I quoted it, I tried to quote it the same way. He says, I think we shouldn't ban chat GPT, rather we should be cautious about it. We need to introduce it in a way more responsible. The point is when kids get into the real world, these powerful tools are going to be used in every profession, every career, every walk of life. And people need to use them to increase their own productivity, wisdom and interaction. We need to teach our kids to understand what these AI chatbots are and how to operate them. We need to teach our students how to access this chatbot and navigate them. This is far more significant. We must teach them how to write prompts using ChatGPT. This is called prompt engineering. Garbage in, garbage out. We must teach them to corroborate the information and incorporate whatever output they want into their products in a way that is both ethical and effective. So this is inevitable challenge in front of us. Feeling relaxed now, right? So this is his theory. I just tried to uh, present it this way. Okay. What's the takeaway? Okay. 
uh, after going through the whole information, starting from ChatGPT's introduction, its innovation, its role in education, specifically in academic writing, its benefits for students and teachers, and its uh, downsides, okay, and some other, uh, you know, hot topics related to it, like um, plagiarism cases and cheating cases. Uh, we concluded that actually ChatGPT has the potential to revolutionize the way education is delivered. With its ability to personalize learning, automate repetitive tasks, and 24-7 access to educational resources, it can improve the learning experience for both students and teachers. However, it is important to keep in mind the possible drawbacks of ChatGPT, such as the lack of human interaction, reduced critical thinking, and limited understanding of the chatbots. As with any other technology, it's important to approach ChatGPT with caution and consider its pros and cons before implementing it in the classroom. The key to unlock its functionality at its best is to use it in alliance with human interaction and critical thinking, not as a replacement. This will safeguard that students see a well-rounded education that prepares them for the future. As the use of ChatGPT continues to grow, in education, it's crucial to closely monitor its impact and make any necessary modification to guarantee that it's being used in the best possible way to support our students' learning and success. That's it. Okay. Now, coming to the closing. To summarize everything, the impact that ChatGPT has on education is undeniably hard to ignore. Agreed? It has actually moved the foundation of it. Its positive sides, like ability to create personalized interactive lesson and uh, um, easy access to education for people with disabilities, especially its assistance uh, for educators in lesson planning and more. And for the student, uh, they can now get information and brainstorm any time of the day and regardless of their location. As for the negative side, ChatGPT has many shortcomings, including its ability to generate biased responses, produce inaccurate information, inability to multitask, no involvement of critical thinking, and making it easier for students to cheat. These are some concerns that need to be addressed. The truth is, despite all these flaws, ChatGPT is going to stay with us. Yes. Now, the question is, will AI-generated content become a great tool for students to learn and excel, or will it be vice versa? Only time will tell. Okay. Resources. Chat GPT. <laughs> Just a fun fact, of course. It's not a real case, right? Okay. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for attending my presentation and making it something memorable for me. Actually, we all have to thank you, Ms. Hamira, for this outstanding, exceptional, interactive, and useful presentation, as usual. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, you can use your mic or the chat box. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Dr. Jamal. Uh, I, I don't have a question. I just have a comment if, uh, if I can uh, share that. Sure. Yeah, I actually, I just, wanted to go, yeah uh, I just wanted to go back to the, the point of other bots detecting plagiarism. So um, it is possible to detect, but, um, you know, that cannot be relied on for, for now at the moment. Because uh, as we all know that for chat GPT, it is possible to generate, you know, a response in many different ways. Um, uh, but for teachers, uh, I can say that, you know, th they know their students and their strengths and weaknesses uh, when they produce their written work. Uh, I mean, uh, a student can't hide from teachers if they use chat GPT for their assignments. So that's, that's uh, the, the, the teacher's part. And as for students, you know, uh, ChatGPT is a great tool, and uh, it's a it's a it's a great tool of learning among many things. You know, just like uh, our colleague said here. So, uh, for instance, if I were to use it as a as a as a student for an assignment, for instance, 
So I would I would produce my own writing, and if I get stuck if I get stuck somewhere, then I can use it, or I can get my text, you know, the one I have written myself, analyzed by this chatbot by, by ChatGPT, and then I can compare the two texts, and then you know use my di discretion uh, to improve my own written work. So I think for now this seems to me uh, you know the way ahead. Mm. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree. Thank you so much. But you know, with the advent of these uh, artificial intelligence tools, uh, we teachers actually we need to adapt to them. Actually, this is what I felt. Uh, honestly speaking, before uh, preparing for this presentation, I wasn't much fan of ChatGPT. But uh, when I was just uh, searching for the relevant material, authentic one, of course, I found out that it can be a great help for us. Why? Because we cannot stop our students to use ChatGPT. As a fact, actually, um, uh, last semester when, uh, you know, we, we face this and we find it many times when students are happy for the assignments, the online assignments, right? And they're super duper, I mean, they are so amazing that we they, they get full scores, right? No mistake, no grammatical mistake. And even our Blackboard uh, infrastructure cannot uh, actually find out that it's plagiarized. What, believe me, when this, those students were in a real classroom, uh, when they took the test on paper, wallahi, not even the one, one student got uh, you know, full marks, none of them. Most of them were fake. So what can we do? The only solution is maybe only if you say that uh, even the assignments should be handwritten and handed over to the teachers. I mean, of course, we have been doing the same thing and we are actually used to it and we don't mind it. But, you know, uh, uh, as I mentioned that we are um, actually um, digital immigrant, right? We need to actually understand this limitation. Of course, that's not imposed on us by us, uh, but actually we need to understand. Um, this is Generation uh, Z, okay? And they have to actually be in such, uh, they have to be surrounded by such artificial intelligence tools. We cannot stop them. So why not? Because the basic purpose of teachers is to facilitate uh, their students, right? So why not to teach them how to use it? As Professor Mark said, I'm really touched by his words. Uh, this is what I believe. This is my opinion, of course. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Rimas. Thank you, Maad, for your help. <laughs> Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you again, so Ms. Yeah. A great job. Mashallah. Thank you beautiful. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakallah khair to everyone for uh, attending my webinar. Uh, see you, inshallah, in the next webinar, in the next semester. Inshallah. Take care. Take care. Masalam. Masalam. Thank you. Goodbye. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and here are the evaluation form and the registration form, the YouTube channel for those who asked, and even the website for the Academic Writing Center. Can I ask a question, Blake? Sure. Uh, what about uh, using ChatGPT to paraphrase or, for example, writing an introduction, um, giving uh, uh, I give the point and uh, I ask ChatGPT uh, to write an introduction as a helper. Uh, could you hear the question, Ms. Humera? Uh, I'm sorry, could you please repeat it? I could not actually. I'm sorry. I'm asking about uh, using ChatGPT to paraphrase and um, in uh, introduction not relying on, on um, science or yes. entire um, uh, yes of course system. okay for this you know that's why i just uh, um, actually introduce some of the specific videos here <laughs> okay uh there was one video for the students who actually think that chat gpt is inevitable for them it was like this guy who was just actually Telling the students. If you're going to use Chat GPT to cheat, 
at least do this one thing. See? Because ChatGPT, the OpenAI chatbot, can be used to answer questions, write code, and mm. give you the meaning of life, you may be enticed to use it to cheat on your school, unless you're in one of the school districts that outright banned or blocked ChatGPT, of course. But even still, I recommend you don't cheat. A revolutionary take, I know. But if you must, at least do this one thing. Ask it to explain the reasoning behind the answer it gave you. As a matter of fact, it already does this. But reading isn't remembering. Understanding it is. So provide some follow-up questions to really give you an understanding and explain your understanding in a simple way back into ChatGPT for it to confirm that you do understand it. Because as Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. <laughs> Einstein didn't actually say that, but... Yes. So you got my point here. You know, to use these technologies, we have to be smart. You know, first you just ask uh, ChatGPT to provide some prompts for you, then ask ChatGPT again to verify the same prompts, right? And you will be actually uh, uh, skillful when you will use it continuously, right? I mean, the way you practice it, the way demand it the more you practice it the more you learn how to use it how to be smarter while using chat gpt am i clear okay thank you thank you so much here is a reminder for uh, next week's workshop uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, it's going to be about sentence patterns in academic writing by dr sumail hussein inshallah For, for those who are interested in the soft copy of the presentation, if uh, Ms. Humera does not mind, we can provide you with the presentation and uh, on condition that you send us your email. Yeah, sure, of course, inshallah. I think I have already sent to Ms. Basima. Uh, Ms. Yes, Peter. yes, and she yeah. uploaded it to the Google form. Thank you very much, both uh, you and Basma, mashallah. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great job, a great job as usual, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, Of course, uh, Brother Asif, if you complete the evaluation form correctly and submit it, you'll get the certificate within a few hours, inshallah. Uh, mostly after you complete the evaluation form, you will get it directly, inshallah. This is the evaluation form, Brother Asif. Here is the link, Sister Abdesan. I have a question. Sure. Yes, please. Is it true that if I use ChatGPT uh, to help me write my article, I should refer to it in my references? Hmm. That's a tricky question. Actually, I heard this, but I'm not uh, quite sure about it. No, I, actually, actually, uh, what in my opinion, not exactly. No, because this can help you to generate some prompts, right? You can work on the prompt and you can search on some more articles regarding it. You know, uh, <clears throat> research or articles, something that <clears throat> you need reading and exploring, right? You read and you explore, you find out, you collect your data and then you verify it, okay? Then you make changes to it, you add it and you re-add it. This is how creation actually is being uh, brought into your final product. So, I, so I don't think so that you, yes. So using GBT in writing articles is not preferable. Um, well, uh, writing articles, you can actually use it to get some hints, some ideas, you know, some prompts, uh -huh. because sometimes our mind is blocked, right? So of course, this is a database, uh, uh, large language model. 
uh, it is meant to help us actually. The important thing is that we should not consider it all in all. Yani, but whatever chat GPT has, you just copy and paste. No, this should not be the practice actually. It's not encouraged and it's not going to help because um, ultimately it's uh, just uh, artificial intelligence. Humans are humans, come on, super creation of Allah, right? We must yeah. believe in our own abilities, in our own uh, ideas, and our mind is, uh, believe me, it's amazing. It's an amazing creation of Allah. We must trust ourselves. The important thing is uh, to scratch something like, I mean, if you need some hints, you need to figure it out first, you know? And then you can work further on it. For example, if you're going to write some essay, okay? Uh, for example, just take this presentation of today, um, chat GPT, and then it's pros and cons, right? So while searching for it, you will come across uh, uh, when actually it was launched and what, uh, who, who was the team behind it and what are its abilities and capabilities, what are its shortcomings and downsides, how it is important, how it is effective, what are its downsides, you know, so many things will come across. Uh, I mean, and then your mindset will be broadening. I mean, you will have ample ideas to work on, then you will uh, be unable to actually tackle with the stream of ideas. You understand what I mean? Uh, yeah. The important thing is reading. reading, reading, reading. This is the first step. And this is the foremost step. What, what we believe, I mean, reading is very important from authentic uh, materials, of course. Chat GPT okay. can help you for proofreading or the spelling check, grammatical mistakes, things like that, but it cannot work on the concepts completely and you cannot rely on it. So uh, what I believe, uh, we should learn how to live with Chat GPT in a moderation mode, you know, in a moderation mode, uh, moderation way, right? Anything else? No, thank you so much. You're welcome. Again, thank you everybody for taking part and for enriching this uh, interesting, mm -hmm. actually, uh, workshop. We can, oh. yes, I'm any sorry. questions? Yeah. Feel free. Sure. Doctor, you said we have to read. Uh, can I use chat GPT to provide reliable resources for me to read from it? Uh, sorry, can can you uh, use for what? Can I use chat GPT to provide, to provide a reliable resources for me to read from it? Yeah, of course, it can give you prompts. You see, when I uh, just uh, mentioned uh, Professor Mark's theory of uh, garbage in and garbage out, right? I would like to share here with you that slide. It might help you to understand. Wait, please. It's here. This is how it can help you. You need, first of all, to get introduced with this ch uh, chat bar, right? How will it work for you? Then understand. Okay, then access its material, whatever it gives you. Then prompt engineering. What is prompt engineering? Garbage and garbage out. I mean, you can just work on it and find out. It's uh, something like to, to just um, uh, take the wheat and leave the shop, right? It's just like that. Then corroborate and incorporate. And then there's your final product. That's it. Uh, have you started using chat GPT? You know, before or without starting using chat gpt you cannot actually realize its potential right so first just start using it do not copy paste try to understand it first how does it work okay and how can you just use it it's a machine come on we are humans okay this machine is not it's not supposed to uh dictate us actually we humans we are the one who can just command it Yes, you got my point? But it, it's yeah. a reliable resource, right? Yes, you reliable. can rely on it. Yeah, it, it, it is reliable, but not in some certain uh, context. As when I talked about some, uh, you know, when you will ask it something, 
you know, the data that has been fed to ChatGPT is, I think it's up to uh, the mid of uh, the year 2022. But if you're going to ask ChatGPT some recent events going on in the world after the mid of 2022 or in 2023, uh, maybe if you're going to just ask about the earthquakes or the flood somewhere, it will be unable to answer you for that. Because it's still in process, you know, within a week, it got such uh, fame and the users actually started using it. Uh, so it needs some time to update itself. The team behind ChatGPT is still working on it. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my dear. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And again, a bunch of thanks uh, should go again and again to Ms. Hamera. Inshallah, we'll see you next week in talking more about academic writing. Inshallah. Uh, Dr. Inshallah. Inshallah. Dr. Samir uh, Al Hussein will present about yes, sentence patterns. Yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, about yeah, sentence patterns in academic writing. Yes, Till inshallah. that time, Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, thank you again and see you next week.